What's up guys? Welcome back to the Canada Info Hub channel. My name is Holo and I live in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Today I am sitting outside because I want to soak in the sun and feel like I am in Africa. But it's quite windy anyway, so if you hear the wind um, disrupting this video, please be here with me. I am outside. I just have to sit outside. I'm tired of sitting inside to do videos. Yeah. So if this is the first time you are seeing me or seeing any of my videos, I'll say thank you. I just request that you click on the notification bell subscribe to this channel and you get all the updates concerning um, immigrating to Canada and living in Canada and of course it's a it's a free thing you're not paying anything to, to watch this video um, so it's gonna help me and it's gonna help you at the same time so I just request that please subscribe to this channel let's push this channel now guys try let's push this channel to 50k you guys are doing well I know but you can do better <laughs> anyway so today's video i'll be talking about the latest update on um study permits and um studying in canada those are the latest updates that um, have been announced recently and um i've actually talked about it before where they said people can actually apply for their study permit online so what they'll get is an approval in principle once you get an approval in principle although that that particular article i'm going to put it at the end of this video so that you can read, read it yourself once you get the approval in principle it is still not a guarantee that you get a study permit approval so you can get an approval in principle to come study in canada but you have to do your fall um, semester outside Canada until COVID-19 is over. And then once it is over, they will announce for the borders to be open and for people to come in. There's also an update for people, um, for students who got their study permit approval prior to March 18th, they can come to Canada now to come and study. So if you know anybody who got his or her study permit visa, um before march 18 2020 the person is allowed to enter canada and to start their classes so that's one um important thing there um and of course you know that studying in canada is not cheap so if you don't have the funds and you don't you know that you cannot meet the requirements of studying in canada there is no point applying for a study permit visa and something happened recently where one nigerian actually put it on my ig page um the canada info hub instagram page so if you are not following me on that page please go follow me there because i also put in content there one nigerian after studying in canada and spending 10 years in canada he could not get his permanent resident status he became frustrated and he decided that he was going to return back to nigeria he was asking for the the canadian border service agency to deport him back to nigeria and i began to ask myself when i followed his story i realized that there were a lot of things he did wrong not like did wrong he was he was he, his strategy on getting a permanent resident status was actually very poor uh, he schooled in one of the atlantic provinces which is nova scotia got his first degree there and then left nova scotia to british columbia to go and work in one of the oil and gas companies and that is where he made the mistake because Nova Scotia had AIPP and the only requirement for Nova Scotia for you to be eligible for the Nova Scotia AIPP international graduate pathway is to be a graduate of from any of the Nova Scotia University and then get a job offer in either NOC O B A and B once you get a job offer you're eligible for a permanent resident status under aipp and aipp started i think in 2017 which he should have done you know you should have stayed behind in nova scotia get a job in nova scotia apply for um the aipp pathway and become a permanent resident in canada but he didn't do that he went to british columbia instead to go and work in the oil and gas industry and then from british columbia moved to the northwest territories where he thought another immigration pathway was there and all this while when he was moving there's also the canadian experience class which he didn't even take advantage of uh, these are the issues a lot of students face they come to canada as students and after their studies they do not know how to become permanent residents they, come, keep, they start bouncing from one place to another and the three years postgraduate work permit expires and then 
they find themselves in a situation where they are not permanent residents they are out of status so if you're going to come to canada as a student the first thing you should do like i mentioned in the uh, instagram page it's quite windy please bear with me if you don't hear me uh, the first thing you should do as an international student before you even apply for a study permit or before you even choose a program of study the first thing you should do is know your immigration pathways know the options that you have after studies because it doesn't make any sense coming to school in canada and spending all that money as a student as an international student getting your postgraduate work permit spending all those years and still not becoming a permanent resident in canada it doesn't make any sense so if you know that um you want to come to canada to come and study and um age is against you you like you are in your 40s in your early 40s and maybe mid 40s and you feel that education is the best way of coming to canada to come study what you should do first thing you should do is check out all the immigration options that you have that are available to you or that will be available to you after your studies once you know your immigration options check if you can meet those options if if you can meet those options check the the next thing you should do is to check if there are schools in the provinces you intend to study um any school maybe a university or a college normally i would i would prefer that you go for a college a two years program so that it reduces the time you would spend as a student paying international school fees i'm talking i'm talking to people who are 40 and above not people who are who have not gotten their first degree yet if you're 40 and above looking to come to canada to study look for a two years program either a two years masters or a two years diploma that two years program gives you more like a two years postgraduate work permit and then the next thing you should do is look at the province you've chosen look at the immigration options that they have once you see the immigration options that they have ensure that you are able to meet those immigration options based on your qualifications your work experience and you know most of the immigration options in some of these provinces or most of the provinces they actually require that you have a job offer so the next thing you're supposed to be asking yourself is what you intend to come and study would you get a job offer after your studies if you're going to get a job offer after your studies then you can go ahead and um, apply for a apply to the school get your admission then apply for your study permit but of course you know you have to meet the requirements of applying for a study permit and last year i think it was nine months ago i did that video i'm going to leave the link on the description box of this video the top reasons why um, most students get uh, visa study permit refusals if you've not seen that video please watch the video so that you can assess yourself very well to know that you if you apply for a study permit visa you'll be able to get the visa so you don't waste your time uh, rushing to get a school and then at the end of the day realize that you will not be able to meet up with the study permit application so many people do not even have the funds they feel that when they come to canada they'll wing it out or they'll drop out from school hustle a little bit and then go back to school and complete their education but they fail to realize that these are the things that actually lead to a longer time um spent as a student spent as a temporary resident in canada whereas if you have the funds you can focus on your education in in a short time you're out of your school you're out of your studies you've completed your education and then you now start looking for jobs that will make you eligible for either a provincial nominations or any of this immigration pilot program that will make you become a permanent resident at a shorter time but no that's that's not what people do they come into canada drop out of school and at the end of the day they are not able to achieve that which they are supposed to achieve within a short period of time so there are actually schools that you can attend um, or schools that you can go to in canada um, in certain provinces like british columbia ontario and manitoba they have certain programs that are eligible for a provincial nomination after your studies you do not need to have a job offer like in british columbia some courses that you will do and uh, in some schools for master's degree and for phd programs those courses are eligible for provincial nomination immediately you're writing your final papers and getting your certificate you are eligible for a provincial nomination you do not need a job offer the same thing with toronto if you're going to do your phd in toronto you are eligible for a provincial nomination for the master's program in toronto they open and close it once in a while for manitoba they also have a program where um, 
um, if you do an internship in actually two organizations you'll be eligible for a provincial nomination without a job offer you know so you look at all these options those are the things you should look at first look look out first for the immigration options that you have before you make up your mind to choose a school and then also choose the program you want to study uh, another tip i will put in here is that if you're choosing a program you want to study try as much as possible to choose a program that you know will be beneficial to either your career or either your business just in case you do not get your visa so if you're going to return back to your home country you have um you can actually use the knowledge you've gained you know to set up a business in your home country so that's the information i want to share today thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video Bye bye